Shalom Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Danoon Institute of Biblical Research. We've got a very special interview today with Daniel Keith Austin. And those of you that may follow us on Israeli News Live, you got to see the interview we did there with, uh, with Daniel. And today uh, we're going to be talking to him about a brand new children's book that just came out. Uh, this is uh, Daniel's new book, uh, Chelsea's New Beginnings. Uh, new Beginning, I should say. And I uh, can't wait to get into this interview with him today. So welcome, Daniel. Uh, it is exciting to get to talk to you about your new book. I know we interviewed you on Israeli News Live, and uh, we had some very interesting discussions there about the book that uh, actually a book series, I should say, uh, Chelsea's New Beginning that you have started. Uh, so we're glad that you're able to join us today in, in studio uh, or by, by via Skype here uh, to discuss your new book here today. I got to make sure I don't get the, I got a reflection of the light sometimes, but anyway, you guys will be able to see this on your screen. Uh, so tell us, Daniel, tell us a little bit more about the book here. Well, basically it's about a golden retriever puppy who gets adopted by a new family out of a litter of other golden retriever puppies she tries to fit in with them and the parents seem to like her fine but they don't really pay too much attention to her and the boy that they parents got her for his birthday just isn't interested in her he ignores her and and at some point she does something the boy doesn't like and that her his parents uh, give her up at an animal shelter. She's she experiences loneliness and feelings of rejection for the first time, and she finds hope again when she finds another dog in the animal shelter she can relate to. And a man called Nathan walks into the animal shelter and notices her and shows interest in adopting her. Well, that's amazing. I want to just share with you guys a little bit of uh, Daniel's bio that's actually on the uh, the back of Daniel's book as well. And Daniel uh, Daniel Keith Austin was born in Sedalia. Is that pronounced that right, Daniel? Sedalia, Missouri? Yes, yes that's pronounced correctly. correctly. Okay. And spent the earlier part of his childhood at two Air Force bases, uh, Whiteman in Missouri and Shepherd in Texas. Uh, the Chelsea that inspired this story spent three years with Daniel and his family after she passed away when Daniel was seven the family moved to Kansas Daniel graduated with a bachelor's degree from the University of Kansas he takes part in local theater productions and volunteers at animal shelters rescue groups and sanctuaries uh, Daniel currently resides in uh, Miriam Kansas with his two cats Iris and Ivy uh, so, Daniel, I think it would go to say that you love animals. Yes. Um, that's like the first thing people know about me. Absolutely. Uh, Daniel, listen, I know we discussed this before, but uh, now that the book is actually out, and uh, and I want to just, so, so some of our friends can see uh, when we say the book is actually out now, so they can actually see some of this here on the screen. Um, it is available now beside your website, danielkeithaustin.com. Uh, you can go there. You can buy the book right from Daniel's website. It's available on several platforms. We have Lulu, uh, who is actually the publisher of your book, uh, and uh, if you went to lulu.com, just type in Chelsea's New Beginning uh, by Daniel Keith Austin and Melissa Nittleship, who is the uh, illustrator of the book. Uh, you can also find the book uh, again on Lulu. But this is where, uh, Daniel, if you can explain this to us, this is the uh, author's spotlight page. Is that correct? Pretty much. Okay. And uh, Amazon. The book is available on Amazon. Now they say on here on Amazon it's in paperback. Is that is that correct, Daniel, or is the book? Yes, it is available in paperback and ebook on Amazon. Um, but the only place you can get it in hardcover would be from Lulu. All right, I like the hardcover much better. So, yes, yes, yes. Especially when you're dealing with kids. If you're going to deal with kids, and you know the whole thing is, is when you're dealing with the hardcover. 
there's not that there's not much difference in price at all. In fact, what is it like three dollars more, two dollars more is all, Daniel? Yeah, just a little over two dollars more. It's more like two, exactly. two fifty more. Right. So, and then you, uh, it's also available on Barnes and Noble. I uh, just came out uh, there on Barnes and Noble and. Uh, listen, by the way, if you guys order the book for your kids, you read it, don't forget, uh, do a review on the book. That's always a great thing to be able to do. Uh, authors, it, it helps authors to see how the people feel about the book as well. Now, Daniel, I see too, you're on Facebook. Uh, Chelsea's The Golden Retriever. Uh, those of you that are watching, depending on what platform you're watching our broadcast on right now, we had spoke about this before, uh, and you're Facebook page, Daniel, you give a lot of information in here. You've actually even got some video footage of uh, Ch Ch Chelsea the Golden Retriever. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's, it's mostly just me posting videos I put up of my character descriptions on YouTube. And I feel like letting my audience um, learn a little bit more about the characters will get them emotionally invested in my books over the long run, especially since I have really big plans for this book. There will be a lot, and I mean a lot of follow-ups to Chelsea's New Beginning. Well, I think you've done an outstanding job with it, Daniel, because uh, you've published your first book. Uh, you've you've got a bachelor's degree. You're ahead of me there. So, you know, you've done an amazing uh, work already, and, you know, it, it's just it's very commendable. Uh, you know, I took a, a very much of an interest in you writing this children's story because this was a passion that I had myself for many years, even before I wrote my first two books, which mine are, uh, they're nonfiction, they're more biblically based uh, writings that I did. But I always wanted myself to write a children's uh, book. And of course, I, I deal more in the biblical side, so I wanted to write a book that would kind of dramatize from a child's perspective, what would it have been like as a child to see uh, be in the days of Jesus and, and how would have children reacted? So it would have been, it would have been a, uh, based on fiction, but you know, uh, so this is one reason why too, I've taken such an interest in the book that you wrote here called Chelsea's New Beginning. Uh, and even though it is a, it's a work of fiction, it's still based on your personal experience. Can you tell us a little bit more about those personal experiences you had with your golden retriever uh, when you were younger. Yeah. Well, the Chelsea that inspired um, this whole series um, was in a nutshell, the best dog I ever had. She was very laid back, very obedient. Um, Ma, mom tells me that she never had any training, which really surprised me because in my experience dealing with dogs, you need to train them so that they know the rules and they know how to behave around people. But Chelsea, our Chelsea, didn't seem to need any of that. And I, I, I will be honest, I do wish that she would have lived longer. I mean, three years is just too young for any dog to die. But I am grateful for the time I had with her, especially since she made such such a great impact on my life enough to where it inspired me to write these stories. Yeah, I, you know, Daniel, that's another thing that inspired me as well when uh, seeing your book and, and getting a chance to read this was uh, when I was young as well, we had a dog and I, we, my mother called him Dipshe. Uh, it's a German name she gave him and uh, he was a white uh, Labrador retriever. He was kind of the runt, but uh, same for me. I, I just had a love for him, and uh, I, I can't say exactly how many years we had him. Uh, I know we got him around when I was about five, maybe around 11. Unfortunately, my parents were in a very awkward predicament, and they ended up giving him up. Uh, and so when I see the story that you have here, and in the case of uh, Chelsea, she ends up in the dog pound, uh, it kind of brings back those memories, and uh, so it, it's it, it, something that relates to even for me on a personal level. I have a lot of ideas for where I want the story to go. Um, I actually have four more stories fully written out, and I'm working on the um, 
sixth and seventh book kind of simultaneously together right now. I initially thought about just writing these stories uh, about dogs going to doggy daycare because that's where I was working at the time. And I just thought it would be a great idea for a children's story. And, but when I wrote Chelsea's new beginning, I realized she needed a full story arc from beginning to end. I don't know at this point what all will entail in that story arc, but that's part of the fun of writing. You find out as you go along, but I do have, I, I do know at some of the places where it's going to go. And in some of the stories, she will be going to doggy daycare. I do have my first story about that written out already. And she, and uh, one of, one of the things that is going to come up in, in my first uh, three or four stories, she's going to come across a man with severe autism. And Nathan is going to see how she interacts with that man and think about making her a therapy dog. So okay. the thing that, that I find interesting about what you have done with, the, uh, with your book here, you've done it very similar to that of uh, what they're, what's becoming more the norm in movies today. They're, they're making these um, movies that tell the entire life of a story. And so this is something that children really enjoy as well, no doubt, like adults do. Once they get really engrossed into a story, they would like to know what's going to happen as well in the future. And so if you just write one book, you kind of lose that momentum. And you've taken a children's book and you've taken it to another level. And now you're doing that. You're doing like what they're doing in these uh, television shows where they're showing series where it's one after another after another to where a person can fully follow the entire storyline. I think that's very incredible. What, what's your, what inspired you to do that? Well, Stephen, it's very interested, interesting that you bring that up because I do have plans to make this an animated series someday for, for Chelsea the Golden Retriever. Um, I, um, and I totally get what you're saying. Um, I remember as a kid uh, really being... Um, eh, really being into movies that I really liked and wishing I could see more stories being made out of them. And, a, and uh, I'm a big Disney fan and a lot of those movies were Disney movies. And, and I grew up dur during the nineties where they came out with movies that did have sequels to them. And a few of them were good. They were okay. But a lot of them, I feel like, did miss the mark. Um, and you'll hear a lot of people say that um, sequels are not needed to movies or, or that there are never good sequels to movies. I uh, don't really agree with that. I uh, do think a good sequel could be made to pretty much any movie, but you have to give it some really serious thought and consideration of how the story is going to continue. Um, I believe a sequel is lent, meant to logically continue the story using characters and hints at future plots given the original source material. You should give careful consideration to what store, direction the story is going to go and give us more insight to establish character traits with reasonable developments according to what we already know about them. I don't believe a sequel is a, an excuse to exploit what was an excellent story in its own right by pulling characterization and plot devices out of thin air. It has to make sense. And unfortunately, that's just what a lot of sequels do. Listen, friends, those of you that are watching today, again, we're joined here with uh, Daniel Keith Oz and his uh, book has come out the very beginning of the series here called Chelsea's New Beginning. And uh, that is available uh, practically anywhere you go online. It's available on Amazon. Uh, it's available on Lulu Books, who's actually the publisher. And uh, you can find this at Barnes & Noble's website. Just depending on where you happen to shop the most, I know a lot of people are shopping on Amazon, and so it's very nice to get to see his book available on Amazon. Uh, and, of course, uh, uh, is it Books A Million as well, Daniel, or are you? Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble, okay. So, And then, of course, Lulu Books there. Uh, we have the uh, author's spotlight page there. Uh, you can uh, check out there. The book is available 
uh, on both in hardback, which I think hardback is much nicer. It's just my personal thing when you're dealing with children's books. Uh, or paperback. It's only a couple of bucks different. I'd get the hard book. That's just me. But anyway, uh, it is available there. And if you want to follow that storyline and know about things in advance, Daniel's Facebook page, of course, his website as well, but his Facebook page has always seemed to be an excellent source there to get little ideas what's coming up. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for uh, taking the time out with us to be able to talk about your, your book and the series that you're doing here. I'm sure it's going to be a blessing for many of you for many of our viewers there. And uh, again, uh, if you want to get the book, all the links will be in the description below. You can uh, pull those up or you can just go online yourself and uh, type in Chelsea's New Beginning by Daniel Keith Austin. Daniel, thank you again. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you for having me. You're, you're very welcome. Shalom, shalom, friend. Talk, talk to you guys later. <laughs>